forward and just keep your, you know, your, your noise, your background noise down. All right, let's go. So let's kick it off. Nicole, I'm going to go to you first. And um, you're a former Torontonian and you're now in California. Uh, what's the mood like there right now? And what are you seeing that's positive? in the, you know, in, in your world and the spiritual leadership and business community that you're connected with there? What are you, what are you seeing uh, take place and, and what are you noticing that maybe you might give us a little bit of hope? Yeah, thank you, David. Thank you for having me as well. And it's great to meet everybody. Um, yeah, down here in California, it's, a, it's been a bit crazy. I hear, and I did not go to Costco or Walmart or anything, but I hear there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of people cleaning out uh, supplies and so forth. Um, but at the same time, there is such an incredible, uh, there's a, such an incredible support and community around some of the people like that, that I know that what some of the things that they're doing, whether it is posting and saying, hey, if anybody's running short, I have extra, whether that's a box of cereal or whether that's toilet paper or whatever else, or it just needs you know someone to, to, to go and do a run to the grocery store. So uh, that's been really wonderful to see how people are doing that. Some people are actually posting it even outside their house and saying we can't help everybody, but you know, like literally having a sign outside. So there's some really encouraging things there. Also, the, just the focus on uh, spreading love, not fear, has been really present within uh, the community. There is a lot of, you know, I feel it. I'm an empath, and and uh, and so I feel a lot of that heaviness of the energy here. And they just announced that they're going to be closing down all the bar, bars and the wineries, probably restaurants are next. Um, they did that in Ohio and Illinois already that they've closed down the restaurants. So there's a lot of uncertainty that's going on. But in the midst of that, there's an opportunity uh, for great, um, for, for hope and for you know, bring coming together, seeing how we can support each other. Um, and actually our church could not meet because we meet normally in a school. So even if we wanted to, we couldn't meet because uh, they, they are closed. A lot of the school districts here are closed for the next several weeks. And so, uh, so we actually met online. It was super awesome. So just get our, you know, we just work our way around it and find ways that we can connect and we can encourage each other along this journey and uh, and make sure that nobody's left behind excellent and you, you mentioned opportunity and helen i'm going to throw to you this is really from my perspective i see this as like this is like this is like one hell of a test for humanity uh and it's a big opportunity for all of us what do you what would you like to see you know change or, or, or take place or have happen, Helen, and especially in the work you do as a, a minister and, 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 and at the, well, it's, it's now got a new name, uh, at the Center for Spiritual Living. What would you like to see, uh, you know, have happen during mm -hmm. this time right now? Well, a couple of things, and I just have to say, I have seen more centers and churches live stream that have shown up on my my news feed on Facebook than I've ever seen before, which I think is absolutely wonderful. And it is a, a great way to use technology and use what we have available. But I think one of the things for me is to, you know, because I don't see it as a threat, I do see it as an opportunity for each person to take personal responsibility for whether they're coming from a place of fear or love, without judgment whether somebody's coming from fear or not, because all feelings are okay. And, but for myself personally, it's a great way to check in and really recognize that, first of all, this virus has, has no barriers. Like it, there's no, sectioning off a group of people where um, I'm just getting a thing my internet is unstable and I am out in the middle of the boonies in Caroline Alberta right now uh, there is no separation or no um, looking at well only one sector of a population is being affected 
this crosses all barriers. It crosses all races, all religions, all um, uh, economic statuses and uh, sexual preference. So it's a great opportunity for each one of us to recognize that we're all one, we're all connected, we're all in this together. And so how do we support one another, love ourselves, and love people for where they're at? Because it's the vibration of love and it's that consciousness of love that will raise up other people. The moment we go into judgment, we've just created separation. We're no longer in oneness. Right. So, so I think this is a great opportunity for us to okay. get really clear in our consciousness. But not all of humanity is like us or those nope. on the call tonight. They're not nope. all awake and they're not all out of all some of them. Nope. And they don't need to be. Okay. It is not our job to make them anything. Right. Other than to see the divine within them. Like someone said to me, I hope Trump gets the virus. I said, that is a vindictive thing to think. Why would you wish anyone harm? Because that is a reflection of what's going on in your own mind. So our job is to stay in a high watch in our own mind. And it's, you know, and to rise above the collective consciousness of fear. And it's there. We can't deny that it's not there. It's there. People are scared. <clears throat> and yet, when we do our own personal work to know who we are, to know that there is nothing outside of us that has a power over us except for the power we give it. And how do I want to show up? In love or in fear? Yeah. What anybody else does is not my business in a way. My job is to love them where they're at because that love, that will conquer all fear. We might not see it, the direct result of it, but we have to place our faith in that. Otherwise, we, we just lost such connection to the divine. Thanks, that's beautiful, beautifully said. Kathy, you know, you're seeing clients in turmoil, uh, you know, um, and, and Helen mentioned you have a choice of love or fear. How, how, how can, um, well, first of all, in terms of you're seeing some clients who are going through some stuff and they're working through their challenges and their fears and the stuff that they, that's coming up for them. Do you think, like, once they move in into a place of love, do you think also, too, if we have a critical uh, mass of people on the planet moving from fear to love, that maybe then we could really, really, like, make a huge difference on the planet like in terms of a quantum leap here i would say um it's interesting because i say in the last two weeks i wrote a song about 12 years ago called we are one and in about two weeks ago i decided that i'm going to relaunch this song and i've been trying to reach out and to really actually not just speak the we are one but to actually feel um, the oneness and the interconnectedness of all of us. So when Helen was that, or we were just saying that it's hitting all of us. It's not, this is not an individual uh, experience. This is a collective experience. And, and I believe that until we can actually see the reflections of each other in each other, um, I don't see much changing. Now I would have to say in, in even in my own personal life and my professional life um what i am seeing is what you said is fears i also know that uh the reflection it, it shows where i'm at if there's any trauma or there's residual that's still here in this unknown right now so this triggering that's hitting the outside world and it's being inundated we're being inundated especially if you listen to the news and stuff so you're you're, you're having all the time this unknown this fear of the unknown and I, I just, I deeply think what it's, well, what it's for me, it's taking me deeper inside. And in that uh, deep, deeper going inside, I'm able to reflect that back to people as an invitation. An invitation to go deeper. It's like the waves on the ocean, we're the sky, and there's clouds going through right now, but we're the sky. So I'm, I'm inviting people in to observe a little differently. Um, it's a leap. 
there's a leap that needs to occur within myself and in like almost like a pebble into the pond where it ripples out this this deep awareness of oneness i don't feel like the collective and, and like somebody said no judgment there's no judgment it's just awareness it's observation it's observing the best we can I, although our human side sometimes gets triggered and judges and separates each other and yet i have such a, a full uh, deep knowing inside that this oneness has to come alive on this planet in some way so i, I don't know if i'm answering your question completely um and I know there's, 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 you know, aligning and observing oneself in where you are in your consciousness. Where are you? Does there need to be some fears or traumas that are within you that need to be released and let go of so you can see and remember the truth of who you are? Beautifully said. I just want to welcome Robin and Jen. Uh, they, they came in a little behind. Tracy uh, and Nathaniel, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you. Tracy, you, 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 you've been, um, I saw you online yesterday and you've been posting on your uh, TLC uh, Facebook page. You're, you're a bit more of a voice of calm. You have a strong connection to God. You're not in panic mode so much. Uh, so tell me, you, you know, doesn't the energy around us right now affect you a little bit or get you off, off, off kilter? It did me this morning for some reason. Um, you know, I, I, again, I'm, I, as I alluded to earlier, I'm finding a mix of excitement, nervousness, fear, hope, and love. But what's going on in your, your life and how are you managing yourself right now and how are you encouraging those that you teach and work with to keep it real? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I think uh, a few aspects. I actually feel peace, amazing. Uh, I've 17 years in this space preparing for what we're actually seeing in a lot of different levels. I think the only hard thing that I I shouldn't even say it's hard. I have connection. My daughter lives in the DR. My boyfriend's in Florida, probably stuck there for a couple of weeks. Um, so my immediate family isn't, isn't around me, but I have a very large global online community. So the blessing in that is that that's kind of like that family. We have a quite a big, although it hasn't converted yet to a ministry, we have a very big presence. So Online is so normal for me. And one of the things that we've been talking about in our community for many years is 2020 to 2021 and was going to be the year of the start of the great change and mass exodus and, and messages that were being channeled through. So you become in that place of, you know, observation, but also understanding that through great change, you can, you can come into this incredible new space of reality and, compassion and and i know people say we have to yes you have love and you have fear and we talk a lot about that but a lot of people have become so disconnected they don't even really know what that true essence of that that love really what does it mean and what does it mean to be in that peace and that alignment and being a support to other people so i have to say um i have i feel many 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 questions every day and we've been online a lot uh, you know our, my assistant my team they've all been saying the same thing that we're getting a lot of messages of thank you we feel really calm we feel really peaceful and what we've been directing the community to do and it's been really good is like okay you have this pullback and you know no i guess within this virus like i pulled up stats today from the cdc like if you actually pulled them up from 2019 in october to today you know, it's 54 million people had the flu, like the actual flu. And it's about having to put things into perspective, be respectful. But I'm also say to people, you know, you got to come in sense. Like I would say for years, if you're sick, stay home. So as much as this has been a global lockdown energetically, there's so many other things that are presenting from it. So I say to people, what, what's right about this is how can you connect with your family more? There's good things. How could you maybe go outside and do other things? Your businesses, like we've had a global online business for quite a few years and I'm in a group of community of people like, I have nothing online. And I, I'm like, people have been talking for years, get something online. So I think there's these beautiful shifts where people can stay connected online like this. How can you change maybe your businesses, your perspective with your family? Like I love internet right now. I can connect with people I love and we can stay grounded and just have so much fun together but then also the entire community so i think it's a really important for people to say yes we have love and we have fear but what does that truthfully mean what do you need to feel for that love and how is that going to come and change and 
you know, get out of the fear. I, I was in a Walmart yesterday, my, my other daughter and friend that we, we were having a great time. We were kind of laughing at how fair the shelves are because um, the reality is our supply chain in Canada isn't going to really get hit like that. And, you know, you can see energetically a lot of this will blow over as quickly as it came in, which is the start of great, great change for humanity. So you got to look at it like a house. You can't build a, a new house on an old foundation. The world can't build the new foundation into that level of love that so many of us have been looking for and compassion back into humanity on an old foundation. So it's changing. And if you can't celebrate change and you stay in fear, that's where you're going to get stuck. So our community is really focused on that. And that connection. I'm, if you don't have a connection, I don't care what you call it, God of my understanding, your understanding, if you don't have some sort of connection that, that you can lean into, it's harder because it'll feel a little bit more empty. So it's, it's forming it in strength. Right. So let's look at you know, some of the social fabric of our society. Nathaniel, here in Toronto, we're, we're most of us uh, on our, our base um, here on the call. We're seeing, you know, like schools closed, libraries closed yesterday, various retail stores are closing, Starbucks is open, thank God. <laughs> um, but what's happening where you are, uh, you're in the U.S., uh, and, and what ways of hope are you seeing come forth right now? Well, I mean, for for the most part, most of my day I spend at the gym. I'm a, I, I'm a personal trainer, um, so... Um, it's, it's sort of mixed feeling, sort of a mixed bag of things. Um, we actually see a more of a team effort. Like I'm watching teams build more now. Like people are looking to uh, be led in a more peaceful way. So I know with my fitness directors and things of that nature, we always kind of collect with one another and say, okay, so how can we make the clients feel safe that coming to the gym is a safe space? Sort of putting things, uh, we have this term we call social proprioception. And basically what that means is being aware of what's going on around you while also being aware of where you are. So um, wiping things down, just doing something to let someone else know that they're safe being in your space has been one of the key factors for where we are as far as, you know, in personal training, but just on a, on a, like a day-to-day -day basis, talking to people, um, engaging them, um, I still embrace people. I did not stop embracing people because of the coronavirus. I still shake people's hands and look them in the eyes. Like I don't, I didn't let the epidemic or the pandemic or however you want to uh, term, term this, I didn't let the environment dictate how I interact with my fellow man. And I think that steadiness has been helpful um, across the board because people look to you in times like this, they look at you like, okay, so what, what should I do? What, what should be the next step? And I tell people just, well, what would you do any other day? If you live today as today and let it be exactly that, um, um, li literally just, just don't try to change a lot of things to try to cope with or to try to mirror the fear-based mentality that you're hearing. Um, there's been some articles that have come out that I've read, some, some news clips and things of that nature that have been shown where there are totally high, a lot of hyperbole in the, in the, in the airways right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I literally have to tell people, I said, you know, you do realize that, you know, I, one of my favorite things to say is, say, well, you know, the Lysol has been killing the coronavirus for, you know, over 100 years or so, however long our Lysol has been out. And I usually make that little joke. Because if I can add some comedy in this, um, it takes some of the sting of negativity off of it a little bit. And people is like, you know what? It's, it's, it's going to be all right. You know, we'll come together as a community. I do have some older clients of mine that are, you know, in the 80s and 70s and 80s or whatever that were concerned for their health. And I said, look, if you feel like something is, is, is not well, you don't, you don't feel like, you know, this is a place for you to come, come to the gym and, and work out. It's totally fine. Just understand that we're here to make you guys feel like this is a safe space and we want you to have that opportunity. But you have the option. Uh, one of my favorite things to tell people when I'm asking them, you know, very, very prying questions, as I always let them know that wherever you are, you have you have authority to occupy that space fully. Let no one else take you from that space. So if you have to, if you're afraid, don't have two different thoughts in the same space. Be afraid, understand why you're afraid, get clear with that identity, and then move into being not afraid anymore. But have, give yourself time to work with the fear 
and then move into the next space. It's sort of like I do what's called segmenting. So I segment where I am. If I'm in a negative state, then I need to figure out why I'm there. I don't want to just jump from here to there because then I didn't deal with the problem that got me in the state that I was in in the first place. So dealing with people on that that uh, one-to-one, like, okay, so why are you afraid? Let's answer those questions. What do you want? What do you believe? What are your choices? Those are my three coaching questions. And most of the time when I get the real answer, the real answer has nothing to do with what they were told to want, what they were told to believe, and what they were told to choose. Once I get those three off the table, then you got people who, who have kind of set themselves free. I mean, the power is within us to do it all. Permission comes from outside, but authority comes from within. So I get them back in touch with their own authority to make the decisions for the belief systems and uh, know what they want in those moments. So that's how I engage it. Um, I hope that helps answer your yeah, question. To- totally. And you got kudos from uh, Kadra on the line and then Julie as well. So good job. Oh, you wow. know, awesome. I mentioned at the top that we're being forced to collectively face our fears. You know, to me, this is like a crash course and meet yourself head freaking on, you know, it's like, there you go. You want it? You know, you, you said you want to change. You said you wanted, you know, world transformation. It starts with you, buddy. Uh, Nicole, how are you uh, coaching business clients to keep it together? As you know, really the business world and, and, and yeah, Tracy, I get like go online, but you know, there's other parts of the business world. They're really unraveling uh, the travel industry, uh, service industry, retailers, you know, certain retailers, it was like a ghost town. I was out in Richmond Hill yesterday and it was a ghost town. So Nicole, how are you coaching business clients to keep it together as the business world is unraveling? And then there's a second part too, to this question, since you do a lot of work around leadership, what kind of leadership do we need in times like this? What qualities do we need to sort of, all of us need to embrace? Because we're all leaders. Yes, that is true. We are all leaders. And I think it was already said here before that we need to focus, we start with ourselves and how we show up and the awareness about what's going on for us. And then how, I think Kathy said that, and then how we, uh, we operate in the world. Now to your question about, uh, to, you asked me a couple of questions there in terms of my clients, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, there are, yes, there are some that are online. They're not going to be that affected by it. There are some that are, uh, quite affected by it. And I think what's really important in this is that. Uh, that we recognize that number one, it's our based on how we feel. Like if we feel feel fearful and afraid, then our creativity is going to be sapped, right? I, I shared on Facebook about this and how how that works, right? If we are if we are in that state, then we're not going to be thinking clearly about what are the opportunities. For example, I mentioned earlier about restaurants. Well, restaurants might close, but what about takeout? What are some of the alternative ways? And so that's what I've been talking to uh, business owners about, or what are some of the alternative ways in which they can do their business? Sometimes, sometimes necessity, innovation comes from necessity, right? We're required, things change, things that are not in our control change. And we get to adapt with it. And so the first thing is is recognizing where we are ourselves and dealing with that. And so that we can get to that place of calm and inner peace. I think it's really important to, yes, you want to hear what's going on in the news so you can stay up to date on it. But other than that, get off the social media. Don't get caught in that trap of negative news. The news media is generally negative news, right? And they own Amen. the airwaves. Pretty negative news, right? They own the airwaves. Mm-hmm. But we own our hearts, we own our minds, we own our ears and our eyes. So we get to choose how much of that we're going to take in. And so you got to get quiet, just like we, t- we tell clients any other time, right? Get quiet, get still, spend that time to really think through, look at your business, look you know and and work uh on your business versus just in your business this is a great opportunity to do that to reevaluate um i think it was tracy that said you know with her with her online community is to say okay well 
you know, and the people that are not online, well, maybe it's time to get on online. So uh, there's a, there's a character, a Chinese character um, that is, that is crisis and opportunity. Yeah, it's it's like, actually the it's same. Like the number, yeah, it's like the number eight, but horizontal. Yeah, it's actually the, the, basically the character for, um, for crisis and the character for opportunity, yes, they are the same. And so we rec if we can recognize, if we can stop the panic, if we can stop the fear that is being fed to us and recognize that in this moment, there are tremendous opportunities, tremendous opportunities to connect with others, tremendous opportunities to serve our clients in a different way based on what they need right? What's going on for them. But we won't see any of that. And business owners won't see any of that unless they take that time to be still, right? To, excuse me, to get creative, right? To look at it and saying like, okay, so this is what it is. I think there's a, there's another thing going on here is that sometimes we, we, it's like that denial, right? We deny that, the, the, well, I don't want this to go on. I don't want things to change. And when we, when we resist change, we create more problems for ourselves. rather than if we embrace it and say, okay, this is what is recognize that this is what is going on in the world rather than trying to wish that it isn't happening. It is happening. Get that it's happening. Okay. Now what, what can we do about it? So I have very loving conversations with clients around, there's no judgment. Kathy, you mentioned that there's no judgment in this. It's really um, about, uh, you know, just recognizing where you're at. Okay. And then where can we go from here? It's the, okay, so now what? Right? That's the so what, now what? Right? It's that conversation is to move forward. So anyway, if, if that, I hope that answers your question. Totally, totally. And, and I'm going to go to, to you. Thanks, Nicole. I'm going to go to you, Tracy. Your, your belief is, you know, that this too shall pass. And you already alluded to it. There will be new opportunities, although we're going to see, a, you know, a little bit of um, bloodshed going on, I think. We already are on the stock market. Where, are, where do you think some opportunities will be moving forward into the future? You know, as the economy seems to be staggering right now. You know, like where do you think the you know the future opportunities might lie? Well, I think that like Nicole said it really well too. Is that you know when you start to look at this energy, there's so many things in our world that weren't working. They weren't working for the all of humanity, right? And when I look at the energy and I talk to people around the world, where I get excited is I really believe we're going to see medical technology come out that is going to be so beneficial that we've never been able to have seen before, or maybe it was suppressed, but I really believe that's going to come to the forefront. I, you know, I have a lot of oil and gas clients. I'm always gentle when I say this, but you know, that era is also changing. It's been there for a long time. I think we're going to see a lot of beautiful things emerge for our planet and for the environment and how we bank and our banking system again old doesn't work for everybody not everyone in the world has access to banks i think we're going to see different systems emerge so that the the way we deal in you know our economic space you can see it's going to change is it going to happen overnight no i kind of say to people it's like if you were a typewriter repair guy and you know the typewriter's leaving but the computer's coming, those guys didn't have jobs as much as they wanted to hang on to it, right? They didn't want to get out of that space where, Nicole, you were saying about getting creative and what else can you look at and what are the opportunities rather than sitting there being afraid? We're, we're kind of in the typewriter days. It's like things are coming down. They're going to change on a political front, an economic front. And it can be scary because those systems are the only systems we've been in. But if you can get into the, the space of say, you know, what if we can now create a new way of, you know, making sure that everybody in the world is taken care of, not just a few, or, you know, if oil and gas is, is slowly going to find its way, how long, who knows, but you know, if we can have solar and free energy and things that we know are out well, there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's been there for a long time, but if it can come forward now at this great place or, you know, medical technology that can literally, I always joke with people, it's like Star, Star Trek days, you know, the doctor that's scanning and you're getting that healing, but imagine we have so much of this that is just ready to birth on the planet. So 
it, it's kind of, I said, maybe I put it this way for people. I said, it's like when you go through a divorce at the beginning, it really sucks, right? You're going through it. It's hard. You don't know what's coming out the other end, but then you get out of it. And usually a year or two, you're like, hmm, why didn't I do, do that sooner? It's like the planet's going through this beautiful morphine and it's okay if you're feeling some fear it's okay if you're feeling some anxiety don't keep it inside like get to a place where people can help you move through it but that there's this these all these possibilities so i believe it's also going to be better for our young people that don't know where to go or they don't have this hope do you think real quick like um yeah and nicole said well said and you guys are yeah. chatting on yeah. the chat board here do you yeah. think um in, in, in you know that the, are we going to see a power shift from the politicians and the people running this place back to us? You know what? It's interesting. I don't know how long it will take. Energetically, I, I've been saying that for a long time, that our political system is kind of, you know, it's capped out. It's been, it's been mass, like it's, it's so huge and it's not helping anybody. It's no. unfortunately the governmental systems are not there to help you if, as much as people think they are, if they were, with the amount of money they have, we wouldn't have poverty, we wouldn't have lack, we wouldn't have people with bad water, we wouldn't have all these issues. So is it gonna take time? I don't know, it could happen tomorrow, we don't know. <laughs> you know, It's like it could, um, probably won't. But I believe, yeah, you're gonna see a lot of change in that, in that structure and more of a union over time of people wanting to help and better people rather than just let's sit there in House of Commons or you know, in, in the Senate and just fight all the time so you can see that is going to start to shift yeah because i'm seeing that like what this is doing is it's leveling the playing field all of a sudden yeah. like yeah. everybody's been affected by this and i think yeah it's like you know somebody posted on facebook today that in china because they've shut down Wuhan, they can see the skies the skies are clear they it's can see the birds, not the factories um in in italy they're singing right uh, in, in, in apartment buildings, so there's there is some kind of good coming out of this. I mean, it, it, it these are stressful times, but let's let's remember most of us on the call, I think, in, in in taking part as guests and also as panelists, like our parents probably went the, the the war, you know, and those were pretty interesting times to say the least, the Second World War. Kathy, I'm going to uh, throw to you. Thanks, Tracy, for that, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm talking about the idea of, you know, all of us facing our worst fears, and we are, we're facing like, oh man, you know, my job, my, what if I die? <laughs> what if I don't go hungry? What if I don't have this? What if I don't have toilet paper? You know, these are serious fears. Um, <laughs> I make light of it. But when you work with a client, what do they have to know about the fear as it relates to their own personal growth? I think it's sort. I just first of all, I want to say I think you're all amazing, and I almost want to say I, you know, I speak. You speak for me, so thank you. And I am technically not good, so I don't know anything about you guys. I wish I could communicate. Just so you know, first and foremost, you're doing great. So, so the first thing uh, I would say um, is it's very important to actually stand with your fear, and to transmute it to actually meet it. So, I mean, I think through my own personal. Uh, life as well and through my experience and through all the, the journeying I've done, I'm a student of life every day, is that we run from our fears and we want to run. I mean, we're talking about addictions and, 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 and things. Yeah. there's just so many addictions across the board that are, are, are us all running from our, our well, f we're actually running probably from some sort of wounded identity, but there's this, to, to actually meet your fear is to know that the fear needs love. There's, there, you know, there's to be able to meet oneself, not the identity of who we think we are, but to actually meet oneself as the infinite. Um, it's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. It's through awareness. But I would say that it's important, and it's been important for me. Um, I have had a lot of loss in the last three years. And, you know, life can kick you and kick you and kick you. And I know this coronavirus is another layer, and it's another processing. I think it's very important to meet um your fears with love and in that you can transmute um you can transmute and uh from my own experience and with my clients is that you can start to see people stretching and creating space to be able to see things differently inside of themselves 
and in that, you know, you know, holding sacred space for people and holding people a place of safety to be able to speak. Um, and, and as a person that has compassion and holds that sacred space for them to be able to um, embrace themselves differently, because I think we're undoing, you know, as everybody's been saying, a, a lot of conditioning. There's just a, a heck of a lot of conditioning that's just blowing and dismantling out of the waters right now and i would even say co like collectively and for me individually having lost my mother a year and a half ago and all those fears and all those things that rise up and i actually just to share with you guys i had a version of this coronavirus for two months in december and i was uh i was tested and i came back with two respiratory viruses so and, and I don't supposedly had COVID-19, but I'll tell you what I did have, I've never been so sick in my life. So what it does is it takes you deeper inside yourself. And then that ability to be as a, as a leader or as, a, as somebody that holds space for other people, it helps you be able to help them be able to embrace themselves on a deeper level as well. And I think important, fear is important. It's important. It's important because we want to see who we're not in order to see who we really are. Mm, beautifully said. And Helen, you know, from your point of view, uh, heading up the, the, the that church community and on Queen Street, you see like all kinds of people. So there's all kinds of personalities and issues and fear and phobias and things coming into every Sunday uh, at 1030. How are you coping with that? How are you working with people in, in, in a way that, that that's helping them heal? Well, and I'd like to also uh, echo what was said in, in that the wisdom that is being shared here by everyone is I'm so glad you all came. Inspiring. Yeah. So thank you for that. Yeah. And, um, and thank you, David. Yeah. I think one of the things that I really work on with people is having them get to a place of coherence where there's an integration of what they're feeling emotionally, what they're thinking, what they're experiencing in their body, and helping them tap into their own intuitive knowing. And it's hard to do that when you're in fear because you go to fight or flight freeze. Mm. So to be able to really calm that, um, that energy and reduce cortisol in the body because that doesn't help us deal with anything we're in crisis around, to really let them know, first of all, that they're loved for who they are, that we come together to love them in all of their stuff, like not support them in, in collapsing into it, that's different, but to, to see beyond that patterned personality, to see that they have a resiliency, they have um, the ability to become self-reliant to that place of self-knowing, and um, that they can make healthy, loving, constructive choices for themselves from that place versus fear. So it's, it's really loving people up where they're at, seeing them as this perfect whole divine being beyond all of the, the patterned personality stuff and supporting them and getting grounded in their bodies. And because when you're in fear, you're not in your body. You, you, you've left and um, to let them calm themselves down physically, emotionally, intellectually, because that looping of all those crazy thoughts, like the, like you said, what if, what if I don't have a job? What if I can't pay my bills? What if I can't feed my family? What if I go to the store and there's not enough and, and I can't buy what I need? So all those what ifs keep people at anxiety and in the future. And it really is about, whew, get back into the present moment. Get back to where you are right now and start to find something that you're grateful for. Start to recognize in this moment, you're here mm -hmm. and that you have a capacity to tap into that intuitive knowing that will support you in making the right and perfect decision for you, which might not be the right and perfect decision for somebody else. And that's okay. But what's right for you? So I work a lot on bringing people back into that place of coherence and really seeing that they are powerful 
they're perfect, they're whole, they're complete. They have that capacity to deal with the adversity from a much healthier place. Beautifully yeah. said. I'm going to open up the uh, line here to questions from our guests. So does anybody want to unmute yourself and ask one of our panelists uh, a question? Awesome. Just jump in or you can type it in if you want. I'm, I'm, I've got the chat bar uh, open here. Anybody want to ask any questions or should I move on? Are you okay? Yeah. Going twice. Going chicken soup with rice. Oh. I'd, like, I'd like to say a, a word. Please, thank um, you, Nicholas. I'm, I um, have to th have to thank uh, Helen for inviting me to this uh, meeting. I don't think I would have known about it otherwise, and uh, I've I've quite enjoyed the discussion and the really high level of optimism. I think uh, I'm I'm very happy to listen to some of that. Uh, I I just I just wanted to say that um, a lot of people are talking about fear, and I believe there's a lot of that. But um, I think the emotional gamut is, is bigger than that. I wonder if all this isolation is making at least some people feel more lonely than they do now. And uh, I, I, that doesn't apply to me so much, but I'm experiencing grief because mm. uh, I, I had to, um, on, on, on a board of directors that I'm on, I had to cancel a festival that we planned for a year and um, had to tell the, the people who did most of the work, it's not happening. And th this, this was agonizing, but at the same time, the, 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 the beautiful coming together that we've talked about in this discussion came out in, 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 our, in our community. Um, we, we got great support from the artists and we committed to be very supportive of the artists ourselves. And uh, we've, we've gotten a whole lot of blessings already. Uh, one of our venues is going to give us money to pay for the artists that never got a chance to tell at the venue. So um, this, this, it's, it's really a mixed up time and, and so many things are happening and it, I think it's really complex. So we just have to go through it. Yeah. And I, I like what you said about grief, Nicholas, because like I, I, I've been feeling that a little bit too. Like, um, I, I, and for our guest panelists on the call and everybody on the call, um, I'm, I'm a big jazz fan and I love listening to Jazz FM and I'm looking at their business model and their business model comes from donations. So are people going to come to the table still? And then their other, their key advertisers are people in like the performing arts sector and the theater sector. And guess what? We're not able to go to these places. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're, advertisers are going to start to call back. So there is that grief and that heaviness and yeah. So um, can I say I, something? I think, I think we need to sort of observe that and, and, and be able to talk that out. And, and David? Say, and Kathy, yeah, jump in. No, I just wanted to say that. Another person on the show. I just wanted to say that I, I like what he, you just said about grief because I think fear is sort of an umbrella of many, many uh, feelings there, many emotions. And I think that everybody's, you know, fear is a big gamut. It's got many branches off of fear, definitely. And it's, and it's I like the word complex because there is, there, there's layers to it. And, um, and, I, and I think when you, you said that loneliness, I, there's a dear friend of mine who's feeling very ang anxious. And, you know, when there's that unknowing, there's people that are being sparked in anxiety as well. And yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's definitely a challenging time in, in the sense of deep sea diving into oneself. And when somebody's not even aware of this, the conversations that we're having right now that are quite high vibe and, and just aware, there's a lot of awareness. We've all been, we've all been working it for a long time. And, um, you know, these people that, that aren't privy to this and, and are sort of like in, in like sort of drowning or, you know, looking and buying the, I mean, the joke with the toilet paper and going and, and thinking they're going to be okay, just buying all the stuff, stuff, stuff. And, 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 and it's, it's an opportunity to, to dive very deep within oneself and to be able to help others as well on a deeper level. So yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, I do too. Thanks, Kathy. 
Kadra, you have a question. And Dave, and David, can I just share yeah, something sure. with that too? It's interesting. Earlier, I was saying about how I felt this heaviness uh, uh, from the uh, just like being an empath. Yeah, I felt I hear this too. heaviness. What it was, and thank you, Nicholas, for pointing that out about grief. Because actually, what it was is I felt like I was grieving this pain that people were feeling that's what it felt like it felt like grief i've i know grief um similar to you kathy i've had several losses and so i've been through that process of in just the last few years of grieving and i think that people are searching for like the toilet paper and the way they're trying to grasp onto something because they feel like they're losing either whether it's control or whether it's comfort it's that comfort, I mean, why toilet paper, really? It's kind of un irrational. But it's something that, and I think probably some people started it, and then it snowballed from there, right? People started seeing, oh, there's a shortage. Okay, now I'm going to go grab to it. I'm going to hold on to it. There's a scarcity of something. I'm going to hold on to it. And, and so to have empathy for people is so important. To have empathy, and everyone's talked mm -hmm. about this on the call, is to recognize the deeper issue of what's actually going on here. And if we can address that, then we can best support people through the journey and all of us on this journey. Um, because our responses are going to be as unique as us. Yeah. So yeah, so great for, for bringing that up. And I think there is a much deeper concern that goes beyond whether I get a virus, whether my, my friends or my loved ones get a virus, it's much, much deeper than that. And that's also why I believe that it's actually a huge opportunity to shift, like others have said, it's to actually shift and transform. This world has an opportunity to transform. Things change, things, things don't grow on the, on the mountaintop. Right? They grow in the valleys. So that's when we get, dig deeper. We dig deeper in the dark, you know, points of our life, the difficult moments. That's when we dig deep. When everything's going great, why we don't need to bother. We can just celebrate and have a great time. But it's in these moments that we have the greatest opportunity to transform. That's through awareness. And then we have the choice of what we're going to do with that awareness. And then we have the action that follows that choice. So yeah, and um Kadra, did you have a question? I do. Um Kadra. Go ahead. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kadra, and I know a few people on here. And thank you, the panelists, and thank you for David putting this on. Um, so I just want to share a few things, and then I also have a question for Tracy. Um, this is, uh, so when I used to be younger, I used to watch, I don't know, a show that everybody knows called The Walking Dead. And I used to uh, go visit my parents in Ottawa. I'm from Toronto and I used to go to Ottawa a lot. And I used to daydream on the train how I was going to be ready for if Walking Dead ever happened. And so um, I used to look at the barns and be like, I'm going to hide in that barn and I'm going to get on that horse and I'm going to just gallop to Ottawa to my parents. And I used to have all these thoughts of, of like how I'm going to get ready for the, the world ending. Um, fast forward like three, four years later, um, I'm completely calm. Um, I worked with Tracy a lot as well. And I remember Tracy speaking to us last year and you, and Tracy kept saying, you know, the world, the world is going to change and the world is going to change for the better. And just doing a lot of inner work and, and self-development that I'm able to really stay within myself and not panic and not daydream of like how many guns and how many this and that. I'm like, no, 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 none of this is, none of that is needed. What is really needed for me, at least, is to stay within and see the opportunities and the positiveness that's coming out of this. And so, i.e., when work said to us, you know, you're going to be working from home. I work for a university and they gave us the option to work from home. Um, I saw the positive uh, and the silver lining in this. I, I just had my grandmother pass away. I had my aunt pass away all within like a very short span of time. 2020 starting off has been really, really interesting. Um, and so instead of going, what are we going to do? What are you going to do? I thought to myself, yay, I get to go to Ottawa and I get to spend time with my family and I really get to spend time with myself, some self care instead of working, 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 working. And so that's really been helping me is constantly seeing, seeing the positive in this. Um, 
And then lastly, Tracy, I just wanted to ask you uh, another question. So what's coming up for me lately is I'm not, I'm not concerned about the virus it's, itself. So it's not about the virus. Um, my concern is just humanity. Um, my concern is just uh, seeing people at work panic. Um, I can't even express uh, my colleagues. I can't even express like, well, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I can't even say like I'm concerned. People are like, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So it's like either the other way or one way. Either it's like get all the toilet paper. We're panicking, or it's the <laughs> other way of just constantly snapping at me like it's gonna be okay, Kadra. It's gonna be okay. And I'm like, okay, okay, it's gonna be okay. I never said it wasn't like. So there, I'm seeing a lot of um, just intense reactions. And so my concern is just humanity, our society. What is going to happen? Like to this togetherness. I'm not seeing calmness. I'm seeing calmness within myself. Yay. A lot of self-development went into that. A lot of community work into that. I, I really feel like years of self-development and, and being part of these types of communities has really helped me not be the girl that, that was daydreaming about walking dead and how to get ready for that and being on the other side. But again, my question is, how, what are we get, well, how can I contribute to just my coworkers, my family, or just people coming at me on this like intense reaction even though I'm like, la, 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 everything's going to be okay. And let's just stay calm and see the silver lining. Yeah. You know, it's a great question. I laugh about the walking dead. Yeah. I, you got to find humor during this time. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I always used to say, I couldn't watch the show. I was like, this is humanity. You're supposed to be coming together. Yet you're all pulling each other apart. You know, it's interesting because there's been uh, prophesized for a long time. And I think a lot of us, the here that we've been in these communities and rising up, knowing that this change is coming. And um, again, we know there's going to be mass exodus last year, this year, next year. That, that's part of the change. People in 2012 that just chose not to be here during this transition. That was what 2012 was all about. Everything else can go away. That was really about that ascension of choice. And this is also the period of time for mass awakening of the planet. So a lot of times there's confusion right now with all these people. And for all of us that have woken up and said, you know, we want to be here. We've been training to be here. It's like we've been in these camps of being trained by this beautiful divine energy of how can, so that's why we're more calm. That's why we're more centered. That's why we're having this understanding because for so many of us, we've been in this training, this beautiful training ground to be able to be those beacons of light and to say to the people, you know, okay, if you're, if you're feeling this way, you know, I was asking, well, how, why do you feel this way? And is there a different perception around that? A lot of times when people go into fear and panic, their cell memory right now, and people don't talk a lot about this, when they're getting very scared or they're saying to you, how can you be so calm? Or, you know, I'm pa panicked, like the toilet paper, I'm going to lose everything. I tell them, you know, you should, I spent time in Asia, it was a hose in your hand, like take a pick. You know, <laughs> there's lots of creative ways. But the cell memory, a lot of times when it clicks into fear around stuff like this, it's referencing somewhere in the system where it's had an experience, whether it comes through your family line or however that is from yesterday back of loss, loss through famine, loss through war, loss through destruction. I have a lot of clients who talk to me about their family that have gone through war in Europe, gone through Chernobyl, and we've had to clean out those those memories, right? And when you clean that out of the body, the body becomes more calm. It's like, you'll start to resonate. So when the fear comes in deeper, people are resonating with something that's already in their system. So you can ask them, it's like, well, what are you resonating about this? What is it that maybe I can help you with? Because you're there, you're calm because you're part of that light that's saying, how can I help you? And they might say, I'm afraid of losing my job. And chances are they've lost a job before or they've heard. So the fear of losing the job, what does it trigger for people? It triggers two things. How am I going to feed my family? Where am I going to live? So survival. And so it's funny you say the walking dead. What's it all about? Survival, right? It's like right. So people are in the fear and you could say, okay, well, that you might be afraid of that, but what if there were different possibilities? What if that doesn't happen? Because they're pumping this economy right now. I'd be shocked if we get into April and our economy, they're not, pumping that stock market again and it's going up and it's it will go down again but people will probably this thing is going to probably move out as fast as it came in like i'd be very surprised if we didn't get into april and we were still in this because <gasps> they got to get the economy but you can ask some questions like that you you did the work you're you're there so i would say what it, what is it what is that base fear and when you can start to help to guide them that there are people that can help move through that 
and there's more people showing up, you watch very quickly that memory starts to move out of the system and their stress levels will go down. Like everyone's talking about immune system and, you know, take all these vitamins. Bottom line is you got to get your stress down because your central nervous system will throw your immune system off and you will attract a lot. So yeah. up, up, that's up. what I would suggest. And up your meditations. <laughs> yeah. Your connection. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Adra. Um, Nathaniel, I want to throw to you, you know, you work on the physical level as a personal trainer and a you know, fitness coach. How do you get, you know, people to overcome their fears of moving forward and, you know, um, reaching a new height, you know, because I think it's, it's almost the same psychology that goes into, you know, overcoming your fear of, you know, taking it to another level with your body as it, as it is almost like with, with, with maybe the potential losing our job or, or embracing new careers or new, new, new ways of being. So how do, you, how do you work with your clients to sort of help them sort of move up from more than that, being down? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that question. It's, it's one of my quotes, uh, my, my, one of those fear quotes that I liked. It's about fearing to attempt, fearing the fear of taking action. So one of the quotes that I like to, you know, kind of lean on is from Shakespeare. It says, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we all might win by fearing to attempt. And it's so powerful because someone comes to see me, they have an injury, previous injury. And what happens is the central nervous system shuts that musculature down. That skeletal muscle is not willing to move because it's afraid of being injured again. So the people who have had, you know, who are, you know, prone to pneumonia are afraid of this virus because they have had something like it before and that fear is still there. Their central nervous system is reacting to the environment. Mm -hmm. So what I usually tell them to do is I want you to not think about the, the past injury and I want you to trust your body. And I lead them into trusting themselves and their own strength and their own capabilities in those moments. And breakthroughs happen relatively quickly when they can trust. And the first thing I do is sort of like a neuropsychologist thing. I take away the thing they've relied on to help. So I have a lady who's 85 years old. She comes in with a cane. And the first thing I do in the door is I take away her crutch. So it seems like, oh my gosh, you're going to take her crutch away. But she walks just fine if she doesn't have it in sight. If I don't show her that she has to have something for her fear to rely on, then she actually is capable of being very powerful in her own body. So I sort of, I sort of lead them in a way. So it's all about how I show up. I show up as a leader. Um, I have a, a set of principles that I, that I teach my clients. I actually teach them leadership while I'm personal training them, while I'm training them personally in the gym. I teach them leadership. My, my, I have four pillars that I operate by. Serve, inspire, include, develop. And these four principles, I actually use this in my training cycle so that they always feel like they're being served. I share my story by inspiring them. I include them by hearing what they have to say, by listening, and then I develop them by getting them to trust their own bodies. So it's a matter of how you lead. You can dissipate fear just by getting people to trust that the attempt will be a success. Be a success. So in, in those gym environments, when people come in with those fears, come in with, well, I had this and the doctor said this, the first thing I do is I wipe it all off the table. Let's, let's form a new story today. Today is a new day. I know what the doctor said. I know what so-and-so said. I know what your, your husband, father, brother, mother, all those people said. But we're going to write a new story today. This is the first day of a new chapter in your life. And I'm going to treat it like su as such. And we rejoice and we celebrate the small wins. Every, if it means we took a step and we stumbled, that's a, that's a moment for celebration. That's a moment for uh, reflection. Um, John Maxwell talks about reflection turns hindsight into insight. So I'll teach them that you see that thing you just did there on your own by yourself with no help, no, no additional crutches, no canes. You see that you can do that again. And I teach them how to settle back into those successes and then we get better results. So I think times that we're in right now is that we can find a way to get people to focus on the small wins. It's like everybody is saying, we sort of have the same mantra here. Well, yeah, this happened, but I got a chance to spend time with my family. Yeah, this happened, but now I have, you know, more time to spend with my son. Like my wife is saying, well, with the coronavirus and everything like this, well, um, at least I have more time to spend with our five-year-old now. 
Like we have to, you know, school him at home now more. And uh, that's actually good. The more time he, he spends with his mother, the more nurturing he gets and the more solid he gets in his personality. Um, the Hindus have a, um, a way that they tell the mothers in their culture is that they're to wrap themselves around the child until he's, he, the child is six years old. That way the child gets the full encasing of the nurturing that he needs to be the type of human being we need to be an asset to our humanity. So it's, it's important that we show up as leaders confident and competent in how to serve, inspire, include, and develop everyone, including ourselves. I hope that answers your question. Totally. And, you know, talking about leadership, and Nicole and Helen, I'm going to ask you, you both um, your, your, your takes. Nicole, it sounds like, you, you know, I, I still see uh, programs on, on uh, Facebook. People are advertising, you know, earn, uh, you know, six figures this year and make lots of money, uh, like the Tony Robbins stuff or, or Dean Graziosi, some of these big names. And it's like, it's almost like, who cares now? Like, that doesn't even matter. I think, what do you think is going to change in the personal growth training and development industry? I think one thing we're going to need is we're going to need to sort of do a little reprogramming work and repatterning. But I also think the idea of, um, uh, 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 oh man, um, emotional intelligence is going to be huge moving forward. Yeah, I think. I think there's going to be a reprioritizing and I love what Nathaniel you said. I'm like, yeah. you're awesome, man. I, I'd love to have you on my podcast at some point talking more about this stuff. Um, the, the thing is we're going to see a reprioritizing. Someone earlier was talking about government and where government's going to fit in and all this. I mean, we can prophesy, we can predict, but we don't really know. But what we do know is this is things will change. And there will be a pre-prioritizing um, because people are getting the opportunity, right? Coming back to the opportunity, they're getting the opportunity now to look at what is actually really important. You know, we think that social media, we think that lots of followers is important. We think that um, there's, a, there's a lot of talk around being a six and seven, eight figure earner like you're talking about there. But when it comes to self-preservation if you will and if it comes right down to it in the moment of crisis then you know what's really really important and so i think there there's going to be some change around that what it's going to look like i think people are really there is a process of evolution that's happening of of uh raising the level of consciousness in people and they're just saying you know what i'm tired i'm tired it's like we see it with the with the, um, the vulnerability in Brene Brown's work, you know, it's like people are tired of the, the gurus and the experts and all of the, you know, the curtain, like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. They want to see real. They want to talk truth. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that where the people who are going to be successful now you define success however you want, because of course that's a whole webinar in itself. But when you think about people that are gonna thrive, if you will, and are gonna make a huge impact and are going to lead others, if we can look at that, are gonna be those that are going to be honest, that are gonna be transparent and vulnerable, and they're gonna focus on the things that are really important. I actually hear a lot of people talk about, um, more now than ever, that talk about, um, I don't really care about making, I mean, money is, you know, we, it's, it's valuable. It's a resource. It's a tool to be used, but people are recognizing it more and more that that's what it is. And let's be clear on what it is and focus on the things that are more important. And, and so there's a lot more talk around impact, a lot more talk around generosity. I posted on Facebook, I think it was yesterday and said, if the new currency, what if the new currency was kindness, how wealthy would you be? And so I think we're going to see leaders starting to transform the way people are seeing the, what, what, what has always been, or as long as we've all been alive, what it's always been, that it's going to trans, it's going to, it's going to change. Those are the, those in my mind, those are the real thought leaders. The thought leaders aren't the ones who say, I want to be a thought leader. Let me go and be a thought leader. They're the ones that actually think differently and actually consider and say, Hey, you know what, why do we, do it that way. Does that really work? 
is that really effective? Is that really helping humanity? Is that really impacting our world in the way that we, is it, is it leaving a legacy for our next generation that's, that's the kind of legacy that we want to leave? Hmm, it's not. So then what would it take for us to leave that kind of legacy? And so the leaders are going to be the ones who, who think differently, who don't repackage the old and make it, you know, sound like it's new. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's a whole new, you know, like what if you were just a clean, I'm a big fan of clean slating it and just like, don't go from the old perspective, right? Because that's just going to limit your view. But to start and say, what, would, what if? What could we create? And I think that right now we have that opportunity, as I said, where people, things are changing. They're already moving. Nothing stays the same. We either move forward or we move backwards. We're either growing or we're dying. So we're in a state of change and flux, especially right now. And so people are alert for it. And so it is a great opportunity while people are alert to it to, to you know, be the person who maybe asks a question you know, and says, hey, what about this? Have you thought of this? You know, and actually, rather than trying to tell them what to think, is to ask a question and let their mind work and come up with something even better than you could ever come up with, right? So there's, there's a lot of shifts that I think that are happening in that place of leadership where it's not about giving the answers. It's not about being the guru. It's not about telling people you know, this is the way it is. I remember a gentleman many years ago who said, teach people how to think and then teach them how to think right. And I thought, well, that's really great. Right. Based on what, wh whose opinion. And I think that that's got to go away and where leaders are really the servant leaders. They're the ones that ask and inspire and develop and engage people in that conversation. And we're going to have a much better, a much better, uh, outcome from that than us trying to be the ones it's a lot of pressure it's a lot of pressure to have to be the one who's got all the answers yeah for sure david I, i'm gonna throw it to helen yeah. um you know the, the old john lennon line you know you may say i'm a dreamer um if you had a dream ending to what's happening right now what would that look like helen wow thank nicole I want, I want to piggyback on what Nicole said oh. about leadership because I, I feel like the next wave of leadership is how may I serve from right. a place of spiritual intelligence, not just emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, because the spiritual intelligence is what Nicole was saying around, it's a clean slate. It comes from a true place within, and that's where the ideas lie. That's where the possibilities are. The all, you know, it's all available to us in the quantum field, but we have to be so clear in our own channel and have that pure intention of this serves the highest and best good of all. Right. And, so, and be in the moment of it, like what's mm -hmm. needed today, and then worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, David. Hang on, Dion. Okay. If we're, if we're in the moment and we're doing the work from the place of that pure intention, then tomorrow follows suit. But if we're, if we're just letting our minds run willy-nilly and we're not in integrity and we're, we're, we're trying, we're being selfish and, and in that place of, um, you know, I, I just need to be successful for myself. It's like, then, then you end up creating more of that the next day. So you asked me what my dream would be. My dream is that there is this beautiful coming together of a, of a high watch in consciousness where each one of us takes personal responsibility for doing our work. Mm -hmm. to, come back into ourselves and take full responsibility for um, being that leader from a very different place than what's been showing up. 
And when we're in that place, we don't have to worry about making money or being this or getting that because we're already aligned with what is infinitely available in the universe. But it's that idea that, you know, my job is to make all of this so that I look good in the world. So I can tell people, yes, this is how you do it. No, no, we all have that capacity within ourselves. And so, yeah, my dream is, is that we, we get to that place and we do it, we do it lovingly and supportively um, for everyone. Beautifully said. Dion, you have a question and I'll throw it to everybody and then we're going to wrap up. We've got a med little meditation uh, and a little music. So, um, Dion, you had a question? Uh, it's not really a question. It's a little of what uh, Nicole and uh, Homie was saying because the whole idea about our responsibility, really with all that's going on, who are we taking responsibility for our emotions? and our actions. And if not, who is driving it? You see, if the media is driving it, then there was an incident where a gentleman went in the supermarket, Loblaws, and all he went in was to get tissue paper. But when he saw everyone charging the, um, the shelves, he walked out of there without the tissue paper, without the paper towel, because it was out, but he was also out $900. That's, that's beyond panic spending. So when you think about it, who are we getting our message from? And there's a taking responsibility and ownership of our emotions and our actions. And I, th I believe as, as coaches, as leaders, uh, one of the things that we are the voices that should be out there, that we are the voice of reasoning. We are the ones who can say, uh, stop and take a look at yourself. Uh, a few of my clients, I had to ask them just last week, what are you afraid of? And the truth of the matter, they could not identify what about all this that they were afraid of. So it told me immediately that you're taking your cue from elsewhere. It's not an internal thing that's going on with you. It's not a reflection from a bad flu virus that you had. Someone is navigating your emotions and your action. So even the way you do business, it's impacting it. So when we, when we, if, when, if we have the ability or the platform to really be the voice of reasoning to create balance, because I don't think a lot of people realize they're panicking and they don't know why they're pan why they're in a panic. They heard about this thing. When you ask them even what it will do to them, what are you expecting? They don't have an answer. So I I believe as leaders, one of the things uh, we should make the effort to do is to put the message out there of 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 peace and balance that each and every one of us need through times of change because the reality change is going to happen. It is for us to engage it, that we can navigate the course, that we have a safe landing. But the, so that's really what I wanted to say. That's pretty, pretty impressive. Thanks, Dion. Thank you. Um, I want to wrap it up. I'm going to do rapid fire questions. And then we'll uh, have Ellen lead us in a very short meditation. And Kathy, are you good to play a soul song? I will, I'll, I'll play just as she's doing yeah. a meditation. Okay. So here's uh, my rapid fire time. It's a one, it's either a one word or a sentence that can offer hope and healing for those of us on with us tonight or watching later online uh, that need to take with them in the week ahead. So uh, I'll start with you, Kathy. What's one word or sentence of hope that we can take with us in the week ahead? Innocence. Innocence, wow. And what about it? Embrace it or be it? I, I feel that's who we are. I, th I, I just want to thank everybody because you've profoundly, um, this conversation has been profound. Thank you, David. Thank you, everybody. You've opened me and made space in, in a way that uh, it, it brought, that's the word I wanted to speak, innocence. And, and uh, embracing your innocence, coming home to innocence, 
it's the truth. It's the truth of who we are in the being and not this human doing that we become. So allow the innocence to rise up. Thanks. Thanks, Kyle. Um, Tracy, one word or a sentence to take. Embrace thanks. the transformation. What is it? The change. Embrace the transformation and the change. Okay. Embrace it. Yeah. Thanks. And then um, Nicole. Yeah, trust the process. Just trust. Whoa. Trust you, trust the process, trust that everything that is happening is for your highest good and it's for our highest good. Beautiful. Nathaniel. One one word or one sentence, Nathaniel. One sentence. Hmm. Be a solution. Be the solution. Um, yeah. So it, I think that for me is where things hit home. How can I be a solution, not and lead without the necessity for reward? So how do I empower, align, and strategically place people where they need to be by guiding them where they already know they are or where they already know how to get to? and let them see how they can be a solution. So if I'm a solution to them finding out who they really are, there will be a solution for someone else finding out who they are. And then we'll just repeat the process. So we'll have an entire humanity who knows who they are and fear won't even have a place to settle. Oh, beautifully said, thank you. And then Helen, one word or one sentence for folks. My word is inspiration. And my invitation is that each person step into that place of knowing, knowing how powerful a healer, knowing how powerful um, their own resiliency is. Well, we just kind of lost you. The internet connection. Okay, so. Oh. Rise up. What, Todd, you want to finish that? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's possible to rise above this consciousness and, and be who you're truly meant to be. Okay, are you okay now to lead us in a little uh, guided meditation? I am. Yeah. All right, and I want to thank, uh, Julie says thank you. Uh, Nick uh, says thank you. I want to thank everybody that's participating. And you, know, you, you know, Rob and Sandra, uh, Mary, Catherine, uh, Julie, um, who am I missing? Jan, Jan MCL, who I love. Uh, Dory, uh, Fiona from England, all the way from England, uh, and James, Dion. So what, thank you all for participating and being here today. And I'm going to record this, I am recording, and I'm going to uh, post it on YouTube, my YouTube channel. And the other thing is I'm going to be doing these calls now. I'm launching my radio show. I was going to launch it online, but a little thing like the economy tanking, and I don't think people are going to be buying $3,600,000 packages right now. So, so I'm kind of going to do it online. Um, and uh, our, our next show will be Thursday, and it's a chat about tapping into your why and why, it, why having your purpose and your why is going to be really important moving forward. And that's with Catherine Acero Myers. So, um, Helen, you okay to lead us in a little three to minute, four mm -hmm. minute meditation? And Kathy, are you okay to play a little music? And then we'll. Can, you, can you hear it at all? Yes. Yeah. You can hear it, Kathy. Thank you so much. And so, what I invite everyone to do, if you're comfortable, you can close your eyes. Place your hands over your heart space. Place your hands over your heart and take a breath. Breathing into that beautiful, loving, powerful, expansive heart space. Knowing that this place of what will lead us through any difficulty. So I invite you right now to focus your mind on sending your entire being unconditionally. Breathe in the energy of unconditional love. Breathing it in from 
a lot of stuff to feel takes you to the next moment. The next moment of, again, focusing your mind and breathing in unconditional love into your entire being, allowing this energy to expand and move through every cell, every fiber of your being. With the understanding that there is an infinite power in the universe. It is benevolent. It is infinite love, creative, expressive, expansive. It is who and what each one of us is. And so from this place of oneness, of connection into the divine, into your own beautiful heart space. Know that there is an answer for each one of us and how to show up with elegance, with consciousness, with courage, and with presence and unconditional love. So I say yes to this state of being, knowing that as I am this state of being, this is the energy that goes out into the quantum field where all possibilities exist. So grateful for each and every person on this call today. So grateful for David and all of the facilitators. So grateful for the understanding that we are held in the arms of love. I release my word that is spoken here now in this meditation as law, knowing that the law creates that perfect prototype for all of this to show up in the fullness, in the love, and in the grace for each and every person to benefit from. So again, breathing in, breathing in your heart. Say yes, yes to this love, to this light, to this change, and to the possibility. And so it is. Namaste, everyone. Thank you. Hey. Thank, you. Thank you, everybody. Tracy, uh, Nathaniel. I have four questions. I have way more questions I have to ask. And um, thank you um, uh, to, 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 to Helen, beautiful, Kathy, thank you, um, and, and, and Nicole. And, and thank you, all of the guests. Like, you all said yes right away. And, and, and I'm so... Uh, so happy and, and and I know we're going to be doing more work together and, and I, I just know it so um, just have a really good powerful week just be patient and and um, patience <laughs> it's a good thing this thank week. you David thank you Thanks. thank you David thank you everyone thank wonderful you. to meet you yeah thank you have a beautiful week everyone cheers great my my kitty who is hanging out with me all the whole time I know I he says hello to I wanted to call you, uh, what's the guy from Austin? The cat lady? Huh? <laughs> the cat lady? <laughs> no, no, from Austin Powers. You know, uh, Dr. Evil. Six million dollars. <laughs> That's what it'll take to <laughs> eradicate the earth from the coronavirus. Take care of yourselves, everybody. All right. Bye, Have everyone. Week, everybody. Be well. Okay, thank Be you. Well. And Nathaniel, we'll see you tomorrow.